Welcome to part 5 of the live steam Charles Loco build. And welcome to my workshop and garden railway. Let's get right into it. Next up is to drill the cylinder blocks for the steam chests. Because it was difficult to clamp the steam chest to the cylinder block, I decided to superglue them together. I applied the glue to the steam chest using a parallel and the surface plate to keep them aligned. The paper is in case the glue ran. Luckily it didn't. After gluing I clocked up the top surface with my old dial test indicator to get the steam chest top parallel with the vice base for the bench drill. Here's the after drilling picture. The super glue held up okay in this application. Here's me drilling five holes. Most of this has been sped right up, but you can see the progression of the drill. The drill needed withdrawing all the way to clear the swarf from the depth. The drill is 1.8 mil for 8 BA tapping. Very little force is required to hold the drill vise from turning. It just took a light touch. The drill is spinning around at 2000 RPM. You can see me lining up the drill at the start of each new hole. It's all by feel and is quite light. This sped up view has an almost CNC feel to it. It's the closest I will get to actual CNC. I like to feel the cut. Brass is such a clean metal and this swarf is so inoffensive. Unlike steel which blackens my fingers and steel swarf that gets stuck in them like thin splinters. This is how easy it is to break the super glued bond. There was lots of glue residue on the steam chest. This was removed by heating and scraping the softened glue off. Here's the 8BA tapping setup. Starting in the bench drill with the recoil spring disengaged and using a taper tap. That's a piece of silicone tubing on the tap so that I can grip it easily. Each hole was finished with a plug or bottoming tap to get the maximum depth of thread in these blind holes. 8BA is so much nicer than 10BA. The taps break so easily. It's one of the reasons I moved up from 16mm scale models. I made six 8BA studs from K&S brass, 3 32nd inch brass diameter rod. Six more to make. Now for something completely different. Rather than make more studs just now, I thought I would make a start on the cab plate work. Here is the drawing. Foot plate first. Here's a large piece of 1.6mm cold rolled steel. It was 600 by 300 before I cut out the foot plate for the quarry hunslet. Luckily I was able to use the nicely squared sheared edges. The foot plate is 5.1 inches by 5.7 inches. Time for the cab front, this time using the 0.6mm steel sheet. Again it luckily had two square sheared datum edges. The basic size is 5.5 by 6.3 inches. A brief sojourn into the garden to check the clearance with the Pahutakawa Aerial Roots Tunnel. The trunk is directly on the left and then the right. I have marked out the window openings. They have radiused corners. Originally 3 sixteenths and now 0.3 inch radius. These are marked out with dividers after dot punching their centers. I drilled out the dot punches to allow the piercing saw blade to enter. I am using a 60 TPI blade for this 0.6mm steel. 
These high TPI blades are fragile. I broke one on this job. Due to the flexible blade and saw frame, the piercing saw only cuts on the pull stroke. The frame at the handle is rigid and the blade is strong in tension. You quickly develop the technique of cutting on the pull stroke, which is the reverse of most sawing. If you try cutting on the push stroke, a blade breakage is sure to happen. I'm using an Eclipse PS51 piercing saw. It only has an 87mm throat depth, so it's quite limited in our larger items. These are jewellery saws, but the blades can be mounted in a fret saw frame. These have a great throat depth, as you can see in this image. One window opening sawed and filed to the lines. The cab front is resting on the footplate, supported by my out-of-shot teacup. A delivery from my friend Justin at MBM Model Engineering Supplies in Waiuku. It's round bar for the cylinder end covers and flat bar for the cylinder port face pieces. Here's an action shot of me doing some more cutting. This is the newly arrived wider brass flat for the cylinder port faces. It's one and a half inches wide or 38 mil, as opposed to the one and a quarter inch wide or 32 mil flat that the top covers are made from. This brass felt hard through the saw blade. Hopefully it will be long wearing against the slide valve. I cut two pieces a little over length to allow for milling to size, but before that they will be thicknessed. Deburring is such a major part of any metal cutting or machining that I do. So after cutting the port face blanks from the flat bar, the burrs that would get in the way of the blanks mounting to the faceplate or clamping in the machine vise need removing. I often use a variety of files depending on the job, from the small needle file upwards. When I cut the gears for the live diesel, the large 36 tooth gears took about an hour each to deburr. It's a job that you grow to love. It's all part of the fitting process. Very useful file this. It's a warding file. Now it's smoothed off I can put it in the vertical slide vise. Pushing on with making studs for the right hand cylinder. This is my 8BA threading setup using an Emco Unimat 3 die holder held in my large Jacobs drill chuck. Those three socket head grub screws control the thread diameter and prevent the split die from rotating. The outer two compress the die to reduce the thread size and the middle screw opens up the split to enlarge the thread diameter, but not at the same time. I'm holding it in the collet chuck as it's a firmer grip than the three jaw chuck. I rotate the job by pulling on the drive belt with a gloved hand. Here's the remaining six. They are three thirty second diameter KNS brass, one and one eighth inch long overall with quarter inch th thread length on the top end and 0.2 inch on the bottom end. Port face pieces mounted to the faceplate for skimming down to 0.1 inch thickness. The port pieces were then milled to size on the edges and then set up with the steam chests and drilled through 2.5 mil diameter for the studs to pass through. All the cylinder pieces screwed down, showing how much material needs removing to create the distinctive profile. I am looking forward to that. Progress so far. 
Thanks for watching.